Hello Techie guys, welcome back to Techie Uday. In our last video, we have seen what is the recursion and what is the function, what is the execution flow of the function, how the function works and what is the concept of recursion, how it has been evolved. All these topics in depth you have covered. If you did not watch that video, I strongly recommend you to watch that video and come back here. In this video, we are going to cover the types of recursion and particularly in this video, we will cover the head recursion. What is the head recursion and we will also solve a few examples to understand the head recursion and where we can apply the head recursion that we are going to check in this video. So let's see what is head recursion. Head recursion. In a recursive function, when we call the recursive method first and then do some action, the term says head recursion. But why we need a head recursion and how it is useful in our problem solving? Let's see first understand what is head recursion. When you see here in the demo head recursion, we are calling the recursive method first. It's like demo head recursion of n minus 1. Think, forget about the recursion. When you call this method, you are calling with the parameter n here right when you call in this method whether it is a recursive method or a normal method you are calling it as calling with the argument n minus 1 right you are calling with n minus 1 argument now so think about the execution flow let's see that in our uh, visualizer in our previous video we have seen what is the call stack and how the recursive function behaves when you call it repeatedly and what is the call stack how it prints in that video we have seen all those things in this video we are going to focus on head type of recursion i am calling the recursion demo dot head type of recursion now i am calling the argument of file and let's see the execution flow let's call this method as print instead of uh, demo head recursion let's call this method as print and let's see in our visualizer how this function works when you call that method this is our visualizer and I'll explain how I made this visualizer if you like this video. So like the video right away and subscribe to my channel to get more interesting videos like this. So this is our visualizer and here we are starting with the input of file. When we start the execution, this slider resembles like refers to the n value, current n value. The current n value is 10. So what happens like, let's take the call stack. When you call the print method you are calling the print method directly so the execution stack will have the print method print method you called it but what you are doing are you doing any action inside the print method you are checking the condition which is the base case what is the base case and why we need that check my previous video the base case is like you are telling to the system when to stop the recursion so the base case here is n equal to zero base case is nothing but a condition you can write n equal to zero return or in this way you can write both the meanings are same of course now you are calling the print of n minus 1 again the n value currently is 5 the print of n minus 1 what it becomes without calling any other action you are calling the print of n minus 1 directly so how it behaves now if you go to the visualizer where is my visualizer so you are calling the print of n minus 1 here so when we call, come back to the visualizer you call the print of n minus 1 n minus 1 is 4 without doing any action you made n minus 1 you call the method n minus 1 so for the current call the n value is 4 for the previous call the n value is 5 but the current call n value is 4 now you are again calling the print method with n minus 1 argument so what it becomes it calls the print method and for this call n value is 3 for this call n value is 4 for this call n value is 5 and for this call again n minus 1 you have done for this call print of 2 n value is 2 and again n has become 1 for this call for this print call the n value is 1 and again for this print call n value is 0 and this is call stack of the recursion so you call this print method and the main method is waiting for this print method to complete the print of 5 is waiting for print of 4 print of 4 is waiting for print of 3 and print of 3 is waiting for print of 2 and print of 2 is waiting for print of 1 when we come back to the method here the print of 0 is like n value is 0 when n value is 0 we are not doing anything here so that function completes without doing anything right so where is our visualizer yes 
So the function completes without doing anything. The function completed. Now the print of zero has been completed. So called function completes its execution. It returns to its caller function. Who is the caller function for print of zero? Print of one is the caller function for print of zero. So it returns to that particular point. And you see here, just debug this. See, this is a call stack as I shown in my visualizer. And you are calling the print method that for that print method, the end value is five. Again, you are calling the print method. You can see the stack builds up here. Now for this end value is zero. And for the end value is zero, since the condition false, that's the base case. This function has completed. Who is waiting for this? This is waiting for this function has to complete it. So the print method with end value one, this function is waiting for this to complete. So when this complete, as I said before, when this completes, the execution returns to the caller function's next line. What is the caller function of print of zero? The caller function of print of zero is print of one. And for print of one, what is the next line? It is printing that n value. So it returns to that particular line as it is just a function call and it prints one in the console. It prints one in the console. The same applies for the next recursive calls. Who is waiting for print of one? Print of two is waiting for print of one. Print of three is waiting for print of two to complete. And print of four is waiting for print of three to complete. So in the way, the main function is waiting for print of five to complete because we call that and recursive function called itself and waiting for itself to complete, right? So here print of one prints one and it's popped up from the stack and print two has completed its execution and popped out of the stack. Now print three completes its execution and pops out of the stack and print four. Now print three is completed. Now it's time for print four. So it continues and it completes its action and pop out of the stack. And finally print five has the chance now it completes its execution and pop of the stack and finally the call stack is empty because the main method is the one who called that function and all the function has been completed finally the main method completes so this is how the head recursion works when i continue here the same way the recursion continues and each time the one recursive call pops out of the stack and finally the main method completed all its actions so we got the result of one two three four five printed in order without any loops we have printed one two three four five this is not just for printing we can do it for any other action and at the end this is the head recursion we are doing the recursive call first and then doing some action so we are using the recursive trick to do some action and this is called head recursion Hope you understand what is the head recursion. In our next video, we'll see what is the body or middle recursion. Thank you for watching. Have a good day. Bye-bye.